I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about today. And I thought now was a really good time to talk about one of the biggest lessons that I've learned at Second City and how it's kind of applied to my life. So I'll talk about that. At Second City, there's this expression and it's called protect the freak. All right, so I'll explain it. <coughs> I ate a freakish amount of cheese today and so I'm really phlegmy. TMI, protect the freak. It's this idea that when you are in an improv scene and you're improvising, that you may go into a scene and at some point somebody may say or do something that we would regard as freakish. For example, it could be you're in a normal scene in a grocery store and one person says, oh, hey, Jane, uh, I had some really great dinosaur meat yesterday. Now, not protecting the freak would be if Jane turned to Billy, because I name everyone Billy in improv scenes. Ugh. Anyway, she turns to Billy and goes, um, Billy, uh, there's no such thing as dinosaur meat. And then the scene kind of goes nowhere because, you know, that there was, there's no such thing as dinosaur meat. Protecting the freak would be instead of negating or saying no to this thing that's been offered, this gift that's been offered. Instead, if it went, hey Jane, um, I had some really great uh, dinosaur meat today. And Jane says, oh I know, pterodactyl is absolutely delicious. It's my favorite. If we do that, then we're creating a scene where people are eating dinosaurs. And even though it's silly and weird and odd and freakish, there's something that's being created there and there's a sense of play Wave that freak flag. Woo -hoo. <clears throat> that darn cheese. But it, it extends into life. I personally feel like we don't wave our freak flags enough. And man, have I got a freak flag. But I don't fly it because I want you all to think I got my, my business together in a nice little shiny box. You know, It comes down to a question of do you want people to be jealous of you? Or do you want people to know you? But if we do choose to protect the freak in our lives, we need to protect our own freakdom, our own things that make us strange. So in my improv for anxiety class, which I recommend you all look into because it's really awesome if you have anxiety, which I do, is we did a circle exercise the other day. And it's and this is something you can do with friends and people. It's, it's a little vulnerable, but it's cool. You stand in a circle. One person steps forward and says something that is true for them. So for example, I would step forward and I would say, I ate too much cheese today. And anybody else in the circle who ate too much cheese that day would step into the circle and then you step back together, back into the circle, the outer circle. And you continue to go on with that. And it's really cool what people share. For example, I've only ice skated like twice in my life. And yet every time I listen to music, I choreograph skating routines in my head. Double axle, triple axle, sow cow, sow cow. I secretly want to work as a bagger at a grocery store. I've never been in love. Oh, I secretly dream of making a prequel to Murder, She Wrote called Murder, She Writes. Every day it's a struggle for whether or not I'm going to take a shower. Let's be honest, most days it does not happen. I'm really good at popping up and falling down. I guess the message is protect your freakdom. It's all good to be freaky uh, in improv as well as in life. You contain multitudes. Some of them are freaky multitudes and they're part of you too. <laughs>